y'all. Welcome to Miss Clark's chemistry class. Are you struggling with measuring with significant figures? Or maybe your teacher calls it measuring with accuracy and precision. Measuring. We thought we mastered that years ago. Chemistry. Chemistry is so specific. Your measurements must be accurate. Not only do you want your measurements to be accurate, you want another scientist to be able to measure something you have measured and get the exact same measurement. So we have to be measuring the same way. That's what we call measuring with sig figs. Measurements should include all accurately or known measured values in one estimated digit. Now what that means is we're gonna take our piece of equipment, whatever it may be, and you know all equipment has all those little measure lines on it. You need to measure using all of those lines that are possibly available to you. And then after that, estimate one more digit. Let's try that. So I have a graduated cylinder here. The first thing we need to notice is what are the increments of the little measure lines? If we see we have a six, and a seven, that's going up by ones. These little lines are gonna be 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5. I think you see where I'm going with this. We're measuring in the tenths. All the little lines on this graduated cylinder mean tenths. So if we're gonna estimate one digit past the tenths, that's the hundredths. Your answer must have a number in the hundredths place to be considered measuring with sig figs. So let's look at that. We've got six and seven. So 6.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0.6, 6.6. That takes us to the tenth spot. We've got to estimate that last digit. And since our water line, the bottom of our meniscus, is right on the six, we're gonna estimate that digit as a zero because it is right on. So we're gonna say our answer for this, 6.60. Now I didn't include a unit because we're not for sure what this is measuring in, but most of the time graduated cylinders measure in milliliters. That is how we measure using sig figs. Measure to the full extent of your piece of equipment plus one digit. Let's try that again. Okay, so let's look at our second graduated cylinder. Again, the first thing we need to do is to figure out the increments of measure. What are the littlest lines telling us? So again, we see a 20 and a 30. That's the tens. And so the, the ones is going to be what's here. This is 21, 22, 23, 24. That's a little bit different than the last graduated cylinder. Every piece of equipment is going to have different increments. Every single time, you're going to have to figure out the increments and estimate one past that. We just said that to go from 20 to 30, we're counting by ones. So this graduated cylinder measures to the ones place. That means when we estimate our digit, we're gonna estimate to the tenths spot. Our answer has to have a tenth in it. And so if we look, we've got 21, 22, 23, 24. And again, the water line is exactly on the line, so we're gonna estimate that as a zero, 24.0. Let's try with a thermometer. If we notice, we've got Fahrenheit and Celsius. Don't forget, in science, we always use Celsius because Celsius is in the metric system. But so we can have two different examples, let's go ahead and do Fahrenheit as well. Remember Fahrenheit, that is what we use. We use Fahrenheit here in America. If we go outside and you talk about, oh my God, it was so hot today, it was 100 degrees, that's in Fahrenheit. But in science, we use metric, so that's Celsius. So let's look at Fahrenheit. We see our red line here is between the 70 and the 80. Each line, because there's only five of them, so that represents twos, 72, 74, 76, 78, 80. But when we count by twos, a two is in a ones place. So this piece of equipment can measure to the ones place, even though we're counting by twos. So that means our estimated digit has to be to the tenths place. So we've got 72, 74, 76. Now I think that red line goes just a teeny hair above that 76. So I am going to estimate that as a two. 76.2 degrees Fahrenheit. So let's try the Celsius. We see that we're starting with 20. We've got to go to the 30. The increment's also the same as before, two, four, six, eight. 
So just like we said a while ago, even though we're counting by twos, this piece of equipment measures to the ones place. So if we're gonna estimate that digit, we're gonna estimate to the tenths place. 22, 24. Now if you notice, the red line is a little bit more above the 24. And remember, the next little mark is 26. So halfway is 25. I think we're almost halfway. So I am gonna estimate that 24.8. 24, because that's what my piece of equipment can measure to. 0.8, that's my estimated digit. Let's practice on some triple beam balances. I know, triple beam balances. They're like the dinosaurs used to use them. But I promise, scientists in the real world still use triple beam balances. In fact, my brother is a chemist. He uses a triple beam balance all the time at work. Blows my mind. This rung right here shows us the hundreds place. This rung shows us the tens place. This rung shows us the ones place. And oh look, little marks. So that would be three, that would be 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.4. So this piece of equipment can measure to the tenths place. That means when we estimate a digit, we need to go to the hundredths place. So that would be 186. Now I'm gonna count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's why I've got 186.7. That is the extent of the piece of equipment. I am noticing that the little pointy down thing right here is right past the seven. So my estimated digit is a one, 186.71. And I went ahead and put grams because triple beam balances measure in grams. Let's try it again. This triple beam balance has no numbers in the hundred spot. And that's okay. That means we're just gonna start in the 10 spot. So we're gonna have 40, well, we can't do 41 because the little rung is right before the one. So it's just gonna be 40. So I'm gonna estimate that as 0.99. Now remember, that first nine, I didn't estimate that. I'm putting that because it's right before the one. Past the nine, right before the one. That's why I'm estimating to the nine, 40.99. Because remember, always measure as far as your piece of equipment will allow you. This allowed us to measure to the tenths, so we estimated to the hundredths, which got us the 40.99. Well, I hope that helps you to be able to measure using the correct number of sig figs. If that helped, like the video. If you need me to make you a specific video, leave that in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe. Bye, y'all.